Oh, just a second, it's not working. I just saw um, a message that it's live and recording. Yes. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Cool. And now I can see that myself as well. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, hello, Stuart. I can see Stuart in the chat uh, saying hello. So, um, hello and hello, uh, Jan. So, um, welcome to this panel, actually, on uh, social entrepreneurship making the SDGs a reality. So, I'm here from uh, Paris at the moment, where I'm not based, uh, <laughs> uh, along with a uh, fan who's in Vietnam. Uh, we also have Michael, who's in Germany, and Alex in Greece. So, yeah, we're going to keep this off just to let you know I'm not going to be doing the talking. I just want to make a very, very quick intro. And then I'm just going to leave the floor to everyone. And then we're going to come in and out, as usual, from the session, uh, from uh, each uh, discussion for everyone. Uh, speak so um please in the chat because we'll be monitoring the chat at the same time let us know where you're based uh just to give us a bit of uh perspective it would be nice to know where everyone is so just type this in the chat and i think we'll be able to see that uh, i'm gonna check this now so yeah in the meantime so let's kick this off this is not gonna be a very traditional panel in the sense that um we're going to kick this off with a story of like 30 to 60 seconds, something like that. And then you will get to more about the speakers and um, everything about the topic from their point of view. Um, my name is Maria. I'm a designer, actually, and I'm the founder of GUT, which is a um, design and strategy company. And I have a podcast called GUT Talks. I'm a startup mentor, university lecturer and big four dropout as well. Um, and uh, I'm going to be sharing this discussion and uh, taking it in a specific direction. We will see um, how it goes because we have speakers from everywhere and uh, we're going to have different uh, perspectives on that sense. So um, I, let's kick this off. And I want to ask each one of you to share a story uh, related to social entre entrepreneurship. So a story you've lived or experienced or you got to know about. Good, bad, or ugly, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, let's see. Who, who would like to give, kick this off? Oh, I'm going to start then with Michael. Let's let's do this. Okay, yeah, gladly. Um, it, this, this is kind of a funny story. Years back, now, I'm, I'm Canadian. I live in Germany, but I'm Canadian. Now, the classic Canadian holiday people take is with a camper, right? And I must admit, I have never taken, I had never taken a trip with a camper or a mobile home. And uh, we had this idea years back, this must have been like 2017, to take this trip all the way from Germany to Portugal with a mobile home. And now I found a person who was renting out, there's this organization that, that organizes an private rentals of campers and mobile homes. So I met this person from the Netherlands, which is very near to, to where I live in Dusseldorf, uh, with a mobile home, and we rented that from her. Now, it turns out this person is a really fascinating young woman. She lives in the U.S., and she has started what she calls a pop-up restaurant. The idea being she gets... Mm, for example, day-old bread for free. She gets all kinds of produce at reduced prices. And on regular occasions, they serve people for the very low price, complete meals. They have live music. And the guests can also take home as much food as they want. Um, so... It's this is in St. Louis, Missouri. So it's a, a city with a, a lot of a low income uh, population, a large low income population, a lot of unemployed people. And I think this is just a, an amazing thing that she she has employees. She pays regularly 
and she just you know created this this social entrepreneurship idea out of the blue and uh yeah it's a wonderful thing it's a big success and uh yeah so that's that's a story uh, that that I can share um I'm you know happy to know this person and I think it's a great example of social entrepreneurship that is not purely charitable you know it's an actual business operation she pays people she collects money um but with these uh, social metrics cool thank you thank you for sharing that uh, michael and uh, let's go to uh, alex next hi thank you very um I, I, i've been in 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 the borders of uh social entrepreneurship or actually uh, involved in it in in many different positions um one of the key things that uh, i think is important is how fast the world changes and i don't have a story as such but i i can tell you i was fascinated from um, a panel of oracles uh, uh usa um last uh, time where uh, florence mosant uh, is uh, the founder and chief executive officer of a company of a social entrepreneurship um uh, company called never tech late and she actually teaches uh, older people uh technology and how to interact with all these things that we take as granted uh and they find it quite difficult um to work with in their everyday life and because technology is advancing is advancing super fast uh, and the way she described all the work she has been doing i have to say that I'd, I'd like to, you know, just note this because I think it's super fascinating, um, closing the gap between um, the, the accelerating speed of change and how this impacts society uh, as, as a whole. So I found it super fascinating, and um, that's my encounter, if you want, with, with the best case and as such. Cool. Thank you for this and I'll ask you actually um, you and Michael and then obviously if I'm to to type the names in the chat if you can for everyone if if uh, if they're watching the session as well after and they want this uh, recorded if you just can type the name of the enterprise or the person sure uh, that would be nice and yes over <clears throat> to you yeah thank you so uh, actually uh, because uh thinking about a social entrepreneurship uh I don't have uh, any story, but uh, can I uh, tell a story about the Baker Mac IDC uh, that our uh, our corporation uh, I'm working in? Uh, you know, uh, Baker Mac IDC one of the leading in industrial park developer in Vietnam, and we uh, we open a lot of uh, industrial park uh, along Vietnam, and we uh, you know the. Our the philosophy of development is that we build a full ecosystem for not only the uh, the FDI investor, but also we we build a social hub, we build a, a university, we build the uh, 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 um, uh, high quality urban land, and we build park, we build own society around the the our industrial park. So uh, we name that. Uh, Philosophy, uh, that, that philosophy of development is an ecosystem-based development. We 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 consider not only the the the, the, the FDI investor investor. We consider also the the worker and and their children, also the uh, their family and how and he, inside that ecosystem we build we focus on the sustainable development with the green industrial park. So, uh, because you know, uh, uh, that's why I think about the social entrepreneurship. Uh, because our corporation, we we are not only develop uh, uh, only industrial park uh, to build factory, but we care about the the, the life, of the worker, the life of the investor of the from around the world, and we we, we care about the the education system, healthcare. We build hospital, university. High school and everything, but so that's why we can attract. Uh, we we uh, in inside the Baker Mac ecosystem, we attract uh, modern city uh, uh, nation 
uh, investor from uh, come from city nation to come here because the, for the experts for I- investor they can have a, they can find the high quality life in inside our ecosystem the worker come from southeast asia come from the other province in vietnam can uh, can feel a good better life a better life in, in inside our ecosystem so we always care about the society but not only for making money doing the business but also for the people so i uh, uh, that's my story about the social entrepreneurship. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I think everyone's got the name of um, your company on there um, in the description, actually. But you, know, you can put it as well in the chat. Um, I uh, want to follow up on what you, you're saying, actually, um, and say as you know, chief innovation officers, uh, CEOs, you know, journalists, designers, like we, we kind of have all of us a responsibility to build a more, um, you know, sustainable society, um, as you were saying, Fran, as well, not just uh, to make money, but to do good in in, uh, in that sense. Um, what do you think are the current um, challenges? And, you know, this is a, a general question, but in your reality, where you are today, what, where the projects you're working on, uh, what you're seeing and observing, what are the key challenges uh, that you've observed. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, reverse it. Start with Alex. Then there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Um, I think that um, we 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 see two different trends, if you want. Um, one is the fact that everybody understands that uh, social, cultural, environmental issues are becoming more and more important to entrepreneurship in general. So how can uh, an organization not be social? Um, People are starting to understand and look for companies that have a positive impact on society, no matter where they stand, whether they're non-profit, social entrepreneurships or not. Uh, On the other side, so there is a trend, if you want, from the society demanding um, that all organizations do have um, a recognizable positive impact. Um, On the other side, um, I think we are going through uh, an era of accelerating change, uncertainty um, and volatility, which makes people be more... Um, focused on today uh, and less focused operationally, if you want, I mean, in terms of of, of the organizations and less uh, focused on tomorrow because tomorrow is quite blurred and it has been for the last 10 years, especially where I'm I'm coming from, although we've worked in 27 countries around the globe. So this uncertainty has the effect on most people that they tend to uh, have a tunnel vision, focus on how to make sure that tomorrow, uh, as such, today and tomorrow, everything goes well, and they lose the long-term vision. Our uh, responsibility, the way I see it, is to make people um, rise up to the occasion, um, find the vision despite the uncertainty, find the vision because of the uncertainty, and explain uh, that um, the broader image, the, the, the broader picture is where we, we, we need to have our Northern Star and based on that, do whatever we need to do for today. So this is, this is quite a, a complex situation. Um, I'm, 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 I'm working, for example, I'm, I'm the president of the Sustainable Building Council in Greece, which is the, the local chapter of the World Green Building Council, the biggest organization in sustainability in built environment. And although there is a huge demand, if you want, socially for sustainable building, um, you see entrepreneurs, you see developers focusing a lot more on, you know, we, we live in an uncertain time. What will happen with investments tomorrow, today? Uh, so when you talk to them about 2030 or the uh, uh, sustainable goals of, you know, 55% in 2030 or whatever, it, it, it's, it's way too um, forward for them. 
Well, thank you for that. And yeah, on this last point in terms of investments, I think it's the same in, in the startup world as well. It's like, depending on what's happening right in the world. And now the trend is it's kind of slowing down somehow as well. So yeah, it's it's all uh, interlinked in a certain way. Let's um, let's move to uh, Michael reversing the clock. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, really interesting. Uh, I am involved with three different companies, and but there's there's one I would like to uh, highlight here: the Digital Economist. We in the Digital Economist, uh, we basically have three different uh, business models running uh, in parallel. One, we do grant work, research papers. We also do uh, policy briefs, um, lobbying papers, essentially, on topics including social entrepreneurship. Um, there was a paper we put out, I believe, last year on the topic of social entrepreneurship, also gender parity or, uh, for example, race, um, the whole um, topic of discrimination based on skin color. Also, however, we interlink investors with investable opportunities in alignment with the SDGs, with the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, there are 17 of them, and I think this is one of the things that mm, overwhelms a lot of people. 17 is a big number for, for people to grasp. So I think one, one um, what's the word, w one approach, sorry, one, one approach that can be extremely helpful in terms of the SDGs is to look at the areas that have knock-on effects. I mean, just an, an, a no-brainer is gender parity. In the moment where we empower women put money in their hands, we have a lot of positive knock-on effects throughout society, including better education opportunities for children and, and so on, less domestic violence, and it just goes on and on, better health care outcomes, everything. So this, this is one thing I think that can be very helpful is to focus on those particular SDGs that have these knock-on effects. The other thing that I'd like to emphasize, however, is social entrepreneurship is, as my example, I think, shows, it, it really is a, a personal effort and a personal passion for, for people who, who enter social entrepreneurship. And frankly, that's not enough. There are only so many people out there and so many people with the, the means and the energy to, uh, you know, initiate projects like this. So I think, again, going back to the work with the digital economist in terms of, of policy making, I think the states, the nation states have to step up to the plate, have to introduce policies that favor social entrepreneurship, including the accounting policies, including saying that, you know, it's just, it's not just the bottom line. It's not, you know, shareholder value. It's not stakeholder value either, but this concept of shared value, shared value. There is an institute term shared value. And there's a book by a brilliant woman, Rebecca Henderson, titled Reimagining Capitalism for a World on Fire. A very interesting book, highly recommend it. And she's a brilliant woman. She comes from a consulting background and uh, is a professor, I believe, at Harvard, but I could be wrong, but one of, one of the big universities. So um, basically the, the case she makes is to institute different accounting practices, different policies for corporations that favor these, these social metrics that don't show up in traditional accounting. So the, the, these, these are, I guess, the, the two ideas I'd like to put forward. One, 
focus on the SDGs that have those positive knock-on effects and the nation states have to introduce economic policies that favor social entrepreneurship. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. be a bit sarcastic here <laughs> in the sense that when you have the uh, nation states introducing policies, they would come when they would no longer work sometimes. Uh, it would be a bit too late in that sense. But uh, yeah, obviously it's an, an interesting point. It's just like the way it work, works, right? They decide to implement things that were designed in the past that might not be completely irrelevant and need uh, a reason. And, and that's actually a, a, a mindset thing, I guess, as well, because it's the way things are done. There's no kind of, uh, you know, Trying things fast, testing fast, it just takes, you take so long to build that by the time it ends, it's like, you know, you need to start again. But yeah, uh, anyway, it's, it's two, uh, uh, pertinent, uh, points you're, you're, you're saying. And, uh, and I think this can be something we can really deep dive, but I don't know if we, uh, <laughs> we have, uh, time. So I, I, I want to go now, uh, with the fam and see what are the major challenges, maybe. Um. Uh, thank you, Maria. So uh, actually, I continue to, to to share our story here because you know we are state on a corporation. So when we invest into our green ecosystem about the high quality wastewater treatment factory, about ed education system, university and and hospital, something like that, even for high quality infrastructure for our industrial partner, we need to prove. It to the shareholder. The shareholder is our local government. They always ask why you have to invest something like that. It's too expensive and you cannot get got, uh, a lot of profit. You know, because if we invest a lot, we need to uh, continue to increase the land, land lease uh, price, uh, the leasing price, something like that. But it's difficult to attract uh, the, the FDI investor. But uh, oh, that's one of to main challenge to, to us and even to we, we need to to, law, to, to do to, to, to loan a lot of money from the bank to do that but you know uh, our beauty they are they are believing the SDG believe in sustainable development because they uh, I think uh, in Beka we, we, we go faster than the local government to be honest because we invest and we, we invest for not only for now but for the future. But it's difficult to change the mindset of people, and we cannot wait there. for the social entrepreneur. We cannot wait the change of the society. We we need to to change ourselves first. And if we invest, we must consider about the sustainable development. That's the main main. Uh, that's our our, our 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 opinion in in big commercial. That's why we we in, we attract the Lego. You know, Lego is very famous. And they come here, they invest uh, 1 billion uh, US factory inside our industrial park. Because, you know, from the Europe, from US, and even from the uh, Asia, uh, with the with the good uh, investor, they will consider about the environment, consider about the, the life of the worker, cons consider about the education system and something like that. But they can understand our, our, our philosophy of development. So that's why uh, I think that, um, if we are uh, an, a social entrepreneur, we should look far and have a good vision, and we can find a right partner for for the long time. So I think challenge we we of course we will meet many challenges, but we need to 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 believe in ourselves and we continue to go by the way we we choose it instead of uh, change our mindset and. And, and forget about the sustainable development, forget about the SDG or something like that, I think it's not good. So I mean, that's something I should uh, uh, share with uh, everyone. Cool, thank you. I can see actually when each one of you were talking, uh, was talking actually, uh, everyone was nodding, <laughs> kind of. So it's, uh, I think, uh, as I was saying before, it's, yeah, I think each, um, uh, if you want statement and story of yours is a conversation on its own. Uh, so, you know, th there's also something I would like to touch on uh, quickly. And uh, since the pandemic hit, actually, 
um, doing good at large with companies, big or small, you know, from um, opening up their manufacturing plants uh, to making some specific statements to uh, giving away uh, their softwares. I mean, many things happened in different ways, even in the investment world, there were lots of statements coming up and, you know, money going in a certain direction and whatever. Um, so things have accelerated. I mean, this is uh, this is what happened, uh, basically. Um, anything uh, you guys observed specifically, uh, something you would like to share very specifically related to um, the SDGs or even policies or even at the... Um, as it is in, in general at a smaller scale with companies or um, or a story in your local area, because I know you work with companies as well, um, especially Alex in that sense, you were saying you were working with companies in 27 countries and then uh, found within your own reality and Michael, the work you're doing across three different business models. Um, anything specific you noted uh, that you can share that happened in, in two years that you've been waiting for, for, I don't know, for five or 10 years. This is mine? <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I continue my story because I have only one story in, in Vietnam. Because, you know, uh, Becamet is a key driver of Bình Dương province in Vietnam, key driver of development. And we are very close to the local government because we are state-owned corporation. So uh, we find a, a technique to, to convene the local government. So we, we build a smart, Bình Dương smart city project. But it's not only about the, the smart street lighting, smart traffic. It's about the how do we smart development? How do we deploy a smart development abroad in Bình Dương? And we, we build a triple helix model. We build a, so day by day, we, we, uh, we organize the commission, we organize. Uh, the, the local conference about the sustainable development, about the uh, how do uh, uh, do build a relationship between the research and entrepreneur uh, to and business and low government and day by day we we we, we should keep paying them and train. You know we need to train people, especially the even the government. If we choose the right approach, we can we can change day by day. And you know uh, the. Uh, Bekamet and Bingzhong local government, we build a Bingzhong smart city uh, project, strategic project, and to define the new uh, strategic uh, development for Bingzhong for the next 10 years. And inside that project, we we work with the uh, Anhoven Halan, we work with many uh, international universities, for example, uh, Singapore National University, something like that. The experts come here. And they win, win, uh, and even the Horasit, that's why the Horasit come to the Bingzhong, you know, because they, we want to show to, to even the local government, the, the Bingzhong leader and, and the people in Bingzhong that, okay, that's what happened throughout the world. And we should change. And that's why, because, you know, if, uh, if we are the social entrepreneur, we should find the way to change the people around us. But uh, the, the, we, we cannot make it any policy. We cannot make any decision for the, the community, but we can build a, a, a hybrid project between the entrepreneur, between the business and, and government, and you can give the funding. You know, that's one of the important part. Maybe 100,000 uh, uh, US dollar for one project for one year for something like that. I think this is a social responsibility of every project, every business. If you want to develop, your country, if you want to develop the society around you, you, you have to pay. Because, you know, you cannot wait the, 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 the money from the government or international organization or something like that. It, it's too complex. But if you want to contribute, you have to pay first. But in uh, uh, let do it smarter. Because you can organize some strategic project, a hybrid between the the, the private sector and uh, and public sector and something like that you involve the local government and continue to help them to to change their mindset and after five years you will see the mindset of the leader of the people will change and they will know how do they make a right policy for the right thing that's the way we are doing here 
And that's why I'm in the whole city today. And that's why whole city come to be doing to organize, to share about the many uh, aspects of the, around the world, many programs around the world. So that's one of the experience in, in Beijing, Vietnam, we are doing, especially BKMX. The role of BKMX is very important here. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, Alex, this is just for us. So yeah, if yeah, you want to share what happened quickly that you've been waiting for. for I, I, I understand the, um, uh, uh, what, what uh, you know, we just uh, um, discussed about and what uh, Twanan said uh, uh, right now. Um, coming to, to, to your question, um, I think there are two ways of moving forward. Um, you talked about COVID and the pandemic. Um, and indeed, it accelerated a lot of trends. It accelerated a lot of uh, um, social work. But my fear is that if you rely on uh, black swan events and uh, problems uh, that need to be solved in order to enhance social entrepreneurship, you end up with um, an, an aftertaste which is really bad. Uh, let me explain what I mean. Um, there are two ways of seeing the future. One is seeing problems and their urgency to solve them in a gloom, dystopic uh, uh, environment. And the one is having a vision of a future which is um, much better than today, much more functional, much more just, uh, much more uh, prosperous and working with a positive vision instead of working um, to, let's say, um, correct what seems to be not working only. Uh, I think what we are lacking is a positive vision of the future. Um, we, we see a lot of uh, social uh, entrepreneurship and, and a lot of activities within organizations trying to solve the problem I just described. Short term, what do we have now? We have a huge problem. Let's solve it the best way. In that in, in that context, we lose the view of a bright future. Um, I, I, I'd like to, to spend just one minute to tell you what we did as a company. So we launched um, metallaxis.org. I will write it in your chat so you can see it afterwards. So we, we launched the think tank uh, and the portal where we're trying to educate, if I may say that, uh, people about how wonderful and bright the future can be in order to build visionaries. Uh, we, we, we want people to work for the longer vision as well and these will be the people who will uh, inspire if you want uh, the community to create bigger solutions the more you focus on solving a problem the more the solution is specific it needs to be done i don't have a problem whether it's by compliance because of local governments as as mike said uh, or not it has to be done but we also need to build the platform for people to really look forward to the future. Because the biggest problem we have now is that if you go out and ask 100 people about the future, they will tell you that we will not be able to breathe, we will not be able to have uh, any money, we will not have a job, we will be fighting with each other. We'll be... This is a this is picture of a future that does not help, uh, does not aspire people to, to work towards tomorrow. And I think that this is a huge responsibility uh, personally in, in, in businesses, in communities, in governments to explain that our job today is to build a brighter tomorrow. And we seem to forget that. And COVID did accelerate a lot of things. But when you actually go out of that tunnel, you are left, you know, without the data after 
Thank you for that. And I yeah, know, I don't know if you agree. In your, uh, no, no, I, I agree. COVID did accelerate things, but was also an excuse for many things, uh, for sure. I mean, that you know, it's just the topic also of today's yes, was no, how no. the pandemic and sure. yeah, at some point we need to move forward because now we know what it is that we spot it and, and just keep going in what you're doing, don't just change anything. But she pointed on an interesting point also, which is, um, I'm gonna just rephrase it differently. It's like people, yes, they know what they want maybe but it doesn't mean this is what they need right and when you design specific products and services you you were saying you go and ask people they're not gonna tell you what they want it's it's kind of our job to figure this out by seeing what people actually require and how is this gonna change their lives um and then put everything together and going back i see we have a question from Stuart, which i think comes nicely into this like how social entrepreneurs develop stronger relationships with larger corporations to find the kind of patient capital needed to achieve the outcomes that the SDGs are demanding. So let's go to Michael. And if you want, you can wrap this into your answer <laughs> to the question. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I, and I think this, this is an excellent point that there, there needs to be cooperation between startups between small social entrepreneur, entrepreneurial businesses with larger corporations and also again i hate to keep repeating this but i think the the public se sector needs to have the the courage and the foresight to actually you know introduce those policies i just like to uh, you know I, I don't want to be too much of a smart aleck here but I just like to make a small correction. COVID is not a black swan event. In, in fact, a pandemic has been on radar for many decades. I wrote a paper in 2007 after czars and MERS that talked about exactly what we're going through, social distancing, everything. And I think this is something I totally agree, Alex, that we need vision, we need foresight, we need a positive view of how we can shape the future. At the same time, if you look at nature, risk management is not a four-letter word. I mean, risk management is, is what living organisms do constantly. If you look at even the apex predators in nature, a shark, will always attack from beneath, you know. Uh, uh, tigers, they hunt from, they hunt in the dark and they attack from behind. They have very, uh, very, very strict policies, very strict strategies for limiting their risk, even though these are, of course, very strong and dangerous animals. So anyway, uh, long story short, I think um, we, we definitely need this positive vision and a sense of cooperation. And we also need healthy risk management. And I think uh, if you look at uh, the current invasion of Ukraine, again, Ukrainians will tell you this is nothing new. We, they have been experience, experiencing violence since 2014. And so that the world suddenly wakes up and says, oh, there's this aggression taking place. This is just not realistic. So, yeah, um, I hope that makes some sense. Just, you know, I, I just like to make a case for looking at looking at these challenges and opportunities from many angles at once. Yeah, for sure. And, and this is where you're saying collaboration and I will say um, you were saying a co cooperation, collaboration, and not always consensus, actually, because we need this kind of arguments. So, um, we'll have, uh, yes, go ahead, Alex. Can I just add to, to what Mike just said and uh, concerning Stuart's question, which I find extremely interesting. Stuart talks about stronger relationship with large corporations to find the kind of patient capital. And that has to do exactly with the vision I was talking before about so in order to have patient capital you need to endorse a brighter future and a long-term view and not expect something to be done and finished uh, in, a, in a project sense short or medium term next year 
Uh, and this is exactly what we do. And actually, this is a problem we have with the other issue we mentioned, which is politics. Uh, and you, you said before, Maria, that usually when something uh, reaches the level of politics, it's, it's, it's too late. Um, what, what we need to do is um, have a continuation within politics, which in Europe we don't always have, uh, uh, that can allow for policies that are patient, uh, are consistent, are visionary, and, and can actually uh, keep evolving because we, we don't have a specific target. We might have a target as SDGs as such, but this will move on. It will not stop. We will not reach a point where we say, UP, we made it and now all hell will break loose. So it's, it's a way of living. It's a way of doing business. It's a way of collaborating within society. It's a journey. It's not a de destination. So we need to build a long-term uh, understanding that will enable patient capital to be found, uh, will enable um, governments to be more visionary and not uh, work until the end of their term just to be re-elected as such. Uh, and, and this is the, the broad vision that we need to build. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I want to add to this, actually, that when th there's one thing to keep in mind is also about this, the system and the system change, because if you kind of solve or create something that makes, I don't know, lives better in a way, you want to make sure that it's not creating a problem or something elsewhere. So it's all kind of interlinked and having always this broad vision helps. I think we have like four minutes, two, three minutes left. Um, if there are questions, please put them down. But I want to take this time to have like literally 30 seconds intro on you guys and where you can we can find you. So can you all um, just one by one say, who are you? Like, who's Alex? Who's Fam? Who's Michael? In like 30 seconds for like people here, like uh, um, in the in the audience. Sure, yeah. should I go? Yeah, yeah. Should I jump in? Sure. Um, um, Dury is my name, D-U-R-R-I-E. It's not a very common name, so you'll find me on, on, on LinkedIn. Um, I am basically a writer. That's, that's really like my core business. I've been writing for, for many, many years. And uh, when I started out, when I was even kid school i thought you know writing is what i want to do but i thought about writing in terms of like fiction and i do love writing short stories but i realized that nonfiction is really my passion because that's how we can understand the world better and turn raw data into information and then turn that information into knowledge or insights so yeah, you'll find me on LinkedIn. Uh, as I said, I'm involved in three different companies and you'll find all that information there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let's go to, uh, just underneath, I can see Tuan Pham. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So my name is Donny Pham. Uh, I'm currently, I'm the CIO of Pemek IDC, the, the leading industrial park river in Vietnam. You can find me on LinkedIn with my name, Donny Pham. And uh, actually, actually, I'm uh, I'm the PhD. Uh, I'm uh, do my PhD in computer science, and uh, currently I'm also the assistant to the chairman of the Becamec IDC. So that's why I understand not only about the informi IT IT field in Becamec, but also about the the uh, philosophy development and about the our, our next uh, next uh, next step next generation. Of uh, our industrial park. So that's why uh, I'm very interested in this session. And uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for allowing me to share our story today. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And Alex, I can see we run out of time, actually, but we can do this. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. First of all, Maria, thank you very much for uh, chairing the panel today, and thank you all for this wonderful discussion. Um, my name is Alex. I will not spell the last name because it will take away the last of the rest of the of the time. <laughs> but as everyone said, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm, uh, I'm the I'm the president and CEO of Stix Group, which is an awarded company that designs. Um, prosperity for commercial uh, concepts such as uh, um, chains of uh, retail, um, hospitality, uh, any, any kind of commercial project um, based on strategy, design and execution. I'm also the president of the Sustainable Building Council and the founder of Metallaxis, which I talked about. And I'm the vice president of CEO Clubs, which is the Greek chapter and non-profit again of bringing together CEOs to discuss and share and co-create solutions, which are, again, extremely important. And thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, Alex, as well. So thank you, uh, guys, um, for uh, this panel. It was interesting. I just want to point out that we had um, Bo uh, G, who couldn't make it today, and Sindhu um, as well. So if they watch this, hello. And yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you all. And yeah, see you at some point. Yeah. And thanks everyone for listening. Uh, bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.